Hi everyone, welcome to the Wine Archive. My name is Yannick Durbaka. Today we are at Continent Brown, situated in Margot, and Pauline was so kind enough to organize a small vertical tasting for us from young to old. As you can see, two blind, so I'm very curious about that. So thank you, Pauline. Thank you, Yannick, for coming. And with the team, we are really happy to uh, make this vertical and let you discover the evolution of uh, the wines of the, of the estate. Perfect. So just to sum up a few elements about the chateau, the chateau has been created in 1805 by a Scotsman, John Levis Brown. So that's why we named the chateau Cantenac Brown. Cantenac is the village where we are located and Brown the name of the first owner, located in Margot appellation. And that's why we also have like very unique chateau uh, characters by a Tudor style. Unique because it's only here at Cantenac Brown that you will find such kind of architecture. So we can Perfect. Probably Let's start. start the tasting. So first we're gonna start with the 15 okay. vintage. I'll let you uh, pour it. Yes. So 15 which is quite like very impressive vintage in, uh, in Bordeaux and especially in Margot because Margot is really the appellation of the 15 vintage. Um, we have like classical blend, 61% uh, Cap Sauvignon and 39% of uh, Merlot. Just to speak about the vineyard, we have now 63 hectares spread over the plateau de Cantenac, which is just in front of the chateau, and also the plateau de Margot, which is like a few kilometers away. Um, we recently increased the size of the vineyard. Uh, we had like 48 hectares last year, and nowadays we have 63 hectares, mainly composed of Cabernet Sauvignon. We are in the Medoc, so that's why we find a lot of Cap Sauvignon here. Mm -hmm. And then 30% of Merlot and only 5% of Cabernet Franc. Perfect. So a lot of red berries. Yes, and it was the idea for the 15 vintage to really have uh, the grapes on red fruits mm -hmm. and not on the black, you know, black fruit aromas. Yes. It was really important for us to, to preserve this freshness and this acidity also. And, um, you know, in Bordeaux, the best vintages are so drinkable when they are young. Yes. And then few years after and it was really the case with the 15 like with one mm -hmm. of the next vintage um, even during the primer the wine was so drinkable so easy it was wow. just delicious and and 15 was you know a year that we remember for for everything because everything was kind of perfect yeah. you know very um, easy summer easy, maybe yeah, yeah easy making uh, no disease in the vines uh, really easy work also in the cellar, not too much rain, not too hot days. There was perfect balance between uh, sunny days and the cool nights and also uh, some rains, but not too much. So yeah, it was one of the uh, vintage I was so happy to make. And perfect. I'm very it, curious. Is it the first time you taste it? Yes. Yeah. The last time I tasted this one was when I bought it en primeur. Okay, long time. Yeah, so I'm very <laughs> curious about it. So I hope you keep the bottles in your cellar. You still feel the power, you know, of the, of the wine. And it's so silky. And, and the idea with Cantonac Brown is um, really to have the, ex the best expression of our great souls and the great Cabernet Sauvignon. And we look for one, you know, um, fleshy, velvety and, and bright. Yes. You know, and we, in the 15, we managed to uh, integrate some old Cabernet Sauvignon that we are uh, planting like 15 years ago. And we were so happy with the, with the result. And, you know, with the Bordeaux, it's better to wait. So it's yeah. a heavy bottle, you know, and we advise people to wait like 15, probably 20 years before mm -hmm. doing such kind of, of vintage, obviously. And even the 16 and the 17 and so on. But it's very it's, approachable. Huh? Yes. Yeah, and that's really the, the, um, the, the shape of the great vintages in Bordeaux is they are so drinkable during all their life, actually. But you feel that there's still a lot of tension and, and structure and they need time, you know, to, to really express itself. It's really smooth. Yeah, but, uh, very smooth. But it the needs tenons, time to, to polish yes. it a bit more. It's really it's fresh. Very, yeah. it's but really it's, fresh. Not, it's not like the classic Margot. Eh? It's very in its own style. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. And you know, for people, Margot is like feminine wines, yeah. um, more easy, easy wines. But with such kind of vintage, it's totally the opposite. It's 
really balanced and structured and intense, but in the same time, really smooth, very It delicate. feels also a, bit, a little bit youthful. Yeah. And the red berries are very nice. And you know, when you are drinking it, you are just looking for the next sip, actually. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's very so juicy. It's yes. very juicy, indeed. It's so easy to drink it, actually. It's like, uh, yeah. Perfect. So 15 was a great, great year. Uh, in Bordeaux in general, but mainly in Margot. Margot is definitely the appellation of, uh, of the 15 uh, vintage. We have like a blind tasting. The blind tasting. I'm Do very curious. Guess? No, 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 no. Yeah, I know it's between 15 and 09, <laughs> but I don't know. Are you let's, sure? Let's taste, huh? let's taste. I don't know. So as I said at the origin, origin uh, the owner was Scottish and uh, since December 2019 the uh, chateau is um, managed and is the property of a French family, the Lelous family and Tristan Leloup is the managing uh, the chateau with also José Sanfin who is the director and also the winemaker of the chateau is here since quite a few years, not too much, but quite few. So he knows perfectly the, the estate and um, with the team, they, um, they know perfectly the, the vines. For us, it's more a team, it's like a clan, you know, because people are here since like 15, 20, 30 years right now. So yes, we are more like a team. It's even more than, than a family. It's real in your clan and we are all connected and it's really important for us to share with everyone what is going on in the chateau and, nice. and give them some um, feedback, some tastings um, or what is happening in the vines also. So for example, it was really cool, uh, cool night uh, yesterday. So we yeah, was like, cool finger cross, uh, everything's great. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, yeah, it's more than a family, it's a clan. Perfect. So that's, I think, what, what the people really love to, to know, that it's not, not just a company that makes wines, it's really yeah. a family that makes wine sure. with passion. That's and it. That's yeah. the word, passion. Yeah, really. That's, and, uh, that's why I like uh, Continent Brown very much. Thank you. I'm always, when I visit here, I'm, I'm welcomed with open arms. I, I immediately have the feeling that I I'm part of the clan. You are. You are. Do you know we have your friends over here? Ah, voilà. <laughs> the sheep are my best friends. In, they are waiting in, in for, uh, for you. <laughs> yes. But um, yeah. My guess is on the blind one. So. I so know for blend, sure. The blend is. Yes. Um, I, I, it will not help you, but um, it's Maybe, yeah. 68% Cap Sauvignon, 32% Merlot. So just to. Uh, so we, yeah, only we all we in all vintages of Cab of Canton Agman, Sorry, you only have two grapes: so uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Exception for the eighteen, we managed to put uh, three percent of Cab Franc. It was the first time. Actually, we try every year to blend the Cabernet Franc in the blend of the first wine, but is. It's not breaking what you, we expecting for the Cabernet Franc. Yeah. So that's why we managed only to make it um, in the 18 and it's only making second wine with the, with the rest of the vintages. But we try every year. So yeah. probably in the next years, we will find some Cabernet Franc in the, in the blend. We'll see. So, I've any guess? I don't know, because it's totally different than the 15. Yes. Um, but it's really this, I don't know, my guess, yeah. I, I guess it's such a bad word, but I really think, um, with my knowledge about wine, I think 12 or 13. Oh, it's the 13. The thir I was thinking 13. <laughs> it's 13. a 13, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. yeah so we uh, really wanted to show the potential of a, like, Bad, bad, yes, bad vintage. That's very um, because it, it has a lot of elegance, freshness, yes, also. Voila, but it, it has a not a wall, but very rough tenants. Yeah, but maybe in five, six years, they're all they're all gone, and it's a very delighted wine. Eh? And you know, in Bordeaux, we have the potential to make wine for every occasion. Obviously, mm -hmm. we need wines to keep in our cellars to store them for now 10, 20, 30, 40, 40 years. But also we need wines to be enjoyed 
very yeah. soon or quite soon. So um, 13 is one of the vint best vintage to make it. It's really fresh, it's uh, crunchy. I don't know what you yeah, think. Uh, you, you have like mint flavors. Uh, Menthol I have also. Yeah. And uh, very nice. Yeah, the, the tannins are very nice. It's not very overpowering. Smooth. Yeah, it's the palate is, uh, if you drink the wine, ev your mouth has a everything to tell. Yeah. So the back palate, the front palate, your, your, the sky in your mouth, mm -hmm. I don't know the name, so <laughs> laugh at me. But all my mouth is, everything is very complex. Sure. And 2013, I didn't know uh, it had so much potential. So a good Into surprise. The yeah, it was a very nice surprise. So I think it, you know, from now to like five more years, you can enjoy such uh, such yeah. vintage. But we really want to show to people that if they find some 13, they should try. For it's sure. not like great vintage, but it's good vintage, really. And you know, here in Bordeaux, in in every one region with all the techniques and methods and work and dedication and hard work mm -hmm. and everything, it's kind of impossible to make like bad wines. And yes. if we make bad wines, we will take the decision to not producing, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, we can't by respect with our clients and our um, consumers and wine lovers and also for us. Yeah. Um, if the quality is not here, we can decide to produce less, but produce something really good, you know. Obviously, you have like the shape of the vintage, obviously. So it's more easy drinking, it's more fruity, it's more on the red fruit, and you do not have the power of the 15. But it's a cool wine. Yeah, it's a nice wine. You can just um, put out the socks to really... But, yeah. <laughs> we are not uh, lying. <laughs> but also the, the really um, important factor for... for you can let it here of you. The, the, mo the more important factor or, of um, tasting wine, everybody is, taste is, ev uh, is different. Sure. So some people can love the 2013 Absolutely. because they love this style. Absolutely. That's why we, I think it's very important for videos like this or, or discussions like this, yeah. that people think, oh, but the style of the 2013, it's it sounds like my style, sure. let's, let's try it to 15 oh, okay maybe another time uh, <coughs> some people can enjoy 15 right now yeah. and people will can also enjoy it like in 10 and mm -hmm. 50 years and some people will enjoy 13 now instead of 15 so we need to have like wine for every moment yes you know sure. kind of every year mm -hmm. kind of and you know it's like the nine right now we'll uh, try it now yes it's one of my favorite vintage so far <laughs> yeah i've tasted it last summer it was very last summer yeah I've yeah last summer it. was your first time here yes <laughs> but now i visit it every time it's my it's my second home it, it's your it's your second home yes yeah, yeah. so honine was you know like in the past 10 years one of the record year and kind of the same like the the 15 in terms of some weather and rain and, and sun and, and everything was awesome and 15 it was like one month of harvest the 09 it was only three weeks of harvest and the blend here is quite um, regular and simple 65 cap sauvignon 35 merlot that's it very simple really sim simple simple sometimes but it makes the, the difference <laughs> voilà, yeah and right now is you know these two the older ones, yeah? Yes, these two bottles of vintages are my favorite wines of the estate. Uh, uh, one of my favorite, ones of my favorite vintages. Don't give me any hints. Sorry, to sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Shut my mouth. Now, right now, the 209 right now is fabulous. Yeah, but the and 09 is, in the nose, it's crazy. Huh? You know, you, st you start to have some um, uh, aromatics of evolution, but elegant ones and, and it's spicy, spicy. It's, um, it's really dark, you know, dark fruit, like dark cherry. Dark fruit, herbal, a yeah. little bit of herbs, bouquet. Yes. Um, some thyme. And this is really great to have these two wines and to see how whole bottle are fabulous. Obviously, you can drink them sooner, but you are missing some aspects of the wine. Then, as you said, people um, they have their own uh, taste and prefer to drink such kind of vintage in 
this particular moment with these people also but um it's better to wait yeah. when you drink it now like um 12, 12 years after mm -hmm. It's, I don't know what we don't have to say anything yeah. more actually it's when you good. test this it's great yeah the 09 i'm sorry that i didn't wait because it's <laughs> it's very nice yeah and right now is one of the best vintage to drink oh no this, this is a bottle if you really are looking for a bottle of contenac this is the vintage to to seek because i don't think it's very easy to find um but this is the bottle you get you can't get enough of you Never. really want it's <laughs> like okay uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to drink this one, one now. This one also. This one also. Also? Yes. Like definitely. It. Definitely. You shall see, huh? Yes. But to drink now, for example, you can... The 9, the 10, depending off of your taste. Personally, I prefer to wait a little bit longer for the mm -hmm. 10. You know, the 10 is so present and need to... are really sharp, you know. Yes. And they need time to polish a little bit more. Yeah. For, for, yeah. for me, mm -hmm. obviously. But the 9, the 8... Uh, the seven, the uh, two, the one, the four, um, these kind of vintages are, are great. The 12, uh, we have a second one here, Brio, and the 12, every time we open a bottle, it's just like a bouquet, a basket of fruits, you know? That's nice. And, for, and 12 is not like very intense and everyone forgot the 12, but it's quite nice to, to make it now. Interesting. Shall so I pour the last one? Yes! You want to pour it or I pour it? Uh, I shall pour, pour it. Yeah, you pour it. You touch it, so... Ah, voila. So for the 09, I was forgot to say, uh, I really like the acidity as well. Yes, um, and acidity is important for the, for the aging. Yes. Nice color. On the yes. mystery <laughs> bottle. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but Do you have I'm any any guess or I think any uh, idea? Or I no think yet? for sure it's a it's a very nice vintage because yeah, it's one of your favorites. So that's one hint. <laughs> yeah, but you know. But I want to see through yes, that. Yes, this really morning we were we were talking with Jose um, about uh, the 2000, 2001, 2002, and um, people talked a, a lot about the 2000 because you know it was the two three zeros. But um, last week we tasted these two these three uh, vintages 2001 and 02 and we preferred the 01 and 02 compared to the 2000 and jose especially preferred the 02 because it was quite tough here and actually when you were run maker and and for the team you um you you remember the challenges years you know when it's so easy yes, you, you know yeah. you, it's really great but there is no challenge, you know. But when you have a quite tough year, everything is made here. Yeah. Obviously in in the vines, obviously, but then here. So when you have to make some hard decision and to challenge yourself in the winemaking process, you will remember this vintage. Of course. You so you, you so you prefer the two oh one and the oh yeah. two for the for the two thousand? Yeah. Really, and I wasn't here. Jose was there. Of course, I wasn't here, but. Um, but it's very, it's it's even not strange for me anymore to hear because a lot of wineries say it. Yeah. But for me, it's just one explanation. It's all the, the the point of view of the critics. So <laughs> I don't hate the critics because they are very important. Sure. But it's very hard to follow because you're a wine for the wine consumers. They follow, of course, they follow the critics, the scores information the reviews yes but if they for example come across a bottle that has less score and they open it and they love it even more than a better scored bottle of the critic sure then they're full of question marks yeah so I understand. that's a little bit tough but it's a hard that's cookie why we, we are here and we oh. are making such kind of testing to to explain to people the um, capacity and and the potential of every bottle obviously we will like the wines yes we are producing them so i will lie if i won't tell you that i love the wines but um we have to uh, be fair yeah. and um explain as much as possible the wines and it's great to have you there because you will describe it in your own terms and your own palette and and which is quite different of mine so it's really interesting and and 
right now to advise people yeah so I don't so alors any not, not hints but some elements um the blend 75% cap sauvignon 25% mallow this year we produced only 30% of uh, first wine normally it's not like uh, 55 60% first wine here it was only 30% <laughs> Do we have some bottles left of the We have, yeah. For you I don't know, but yeah, we have. Um I What do you know. think so far? It's really difficult <clears throat> because oh. it's maybe very interesting to explain. If you taste a bottle of the same vintage in at your place, then in the winery you, you should know the wine in the winery has kept in the cellar for Many years. Many, many years many, at the same years. place. Yes. Didn't move in no. the perfect conditions. But the wine that you have in your cellar, you don't know what <laughs> he shipped to <laughs> and yeah. from country to country, from, I don't know, from continent to continent sometimes. But um, yeah, I don't know. In, in my guess, oh, I'm going to shoot myself <laughs> in the foot, but. Be careful. <laughs> but I think uh, every time I, th I, I taste something at the winery, I need to plus up some years because it's very more <laughs> no, There is no wrong answer, don't worry. I, th I think... You, you can come again, don't worry. Um, <laughs> we have your room over here, so... Ah, voilà. I think 1996. It's not so old, so old. but there you have one figure right. One figure right. <laughs> That's a whole. Like ah, the six. Sorry? Ah, so 2006. Yes, it is. Wow. Yes, it is. Because it shows so much maturity. Yes, it is. So I was off 10 years. There goes my diploma. No, that's not too bad. I don't know. It's no, that's really cool. You know, I'm so bad at that. But that is it's, it's it interesting. Because it's, it's very mature very quickly. But it's so smooth. Yeah. And you feel the still the acidity. We talked about that before. And the aromas are so delicate and, and there's still power, but measurable power and I like but it. But it, it, it still has everything. Right? Uh, yes. It's, it's very juicy. Yes. It has some spice. It has red berries, some black blackberries, but mm -hmm. blackcurrant. I can drink it. I'm sorry. I can drink it. Tenants. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I can choose between even that's between. That's tough. The, as that's really I, tough. I would pick the 06. You really? Yeah, a lot of people are going to hate me, but uh, <laughs> 06. six. Uh, and you know, 06, six. Well, wow. it's quite funny. You know, we were talking about two thousand and oh one and oh two, and everyone talked about the oh five, and mm -hmm. everyone forgot the 06. 06. And we prefer the 06 over the oh five. Oh wow! At at the chateau. Because I think we tasted the oh five. Um, no, Ooh, I'm not sure. No, 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 no. Not, not yet. With Mathieu, it was. No, it was. Uh, no, it was 1995. Five, yes, that's what I think. Yeah. Okay. It what? Yes, it was 1995. Yeah, and he brought the 1996. So if you had to choose one one vintage. Ah, oh, that's tough. To drink tomorrow for your birthday. It's, I know not, it's not tomorrow. <laughs> but for example. Um, I don't know. Oh six. Oh six. Yeah, me, me also. Oh, it's very six. approachable. Um, it's everything I'm you want. I'm in love with this vintage and since like two years now. It's everything you want or from three, away. Three, three years. And see the potential of um, so two or six for 15 years. Can you imagine? It has 15 years. It's crazy. But it's, it has so many, it has still tannins and acidity. I don't even know why I said 96. <laughs> But yeah, okay. We have few remaining bottles of the 1996. Not too much, but um, that's two or six. It's a nice one. And 30% first wine. So can you imagine the quality of the second wine? Wow. Now we do not have any more, so no question. No question. No, 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 no points. But um, it was yeah, it was really um, the point was really to show uh, how the wines can evolve and to. Um, explain you guys that bottle wines are made for aging yeah. obviously you can drink them as soon as you want but um we i know it's really hard to wait yeah. you know 
and you need to have some space to store the wines and um, you have perfect uh, temperatures also it's really really important and the humidity and so on but uh, if you can and we know it's quite difficult it's better yeah really it's, really really it's hard, so every year we we are working harder you know, in the precision, in the blend, in the work in the vines, uh, one in the work in the cellar to increase year after year the quality okay. of, of the wines. And um, so Ossix was the first year of the previous owner. Ah, so yes. next time when you come, we will try to try um, vintages in like the 90s or beginning of 20. And you will see the difference yeah. because there is really a difference between the vintages before 06 and the vintages after. after. Even if it's the same team, same place, same vines, same everything. But there is really a gap between these, uh, these two periods. And now we are working harder and harder and with the new plots. Um, we will, yes, and the new plots will be integrated in the 2020 for the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the work in the vines, our new project, uh, we will be able to um, really work more precisely in each plot because we will have one tank per plot. Mm -hmm. So it will be easier for us to really... Micromanage everything. Yes, yes really. Nice. With total control of the wine. Absolutely. Right now, sometimes we need to blend two plots, you know, to full, uh, full up one tank mm -hmm. because we don't... Uh, it's, we, we don't want some air so that's in the tank so that's why we blend two, two plots in the next cellar it will not be in the case anymore so we will have one tank per plot okay. so when we have to go further you know in the um, expression of one particular plot it will be possible so there we so this project will um, be uh, out of land in a few years it so yeah exciting. So we will have to wait a little bit. Uh, first vintage will be 2023. Um, so we will see the difference. All the great things take time. Absolutely. So uh, it's Absolutely. a very nice project. So I'm very curious about You know, that. right now we can work with really old Cabernet Sauvignon, but these plots have been planting like 20 years ago. Yeah. So, you know, we are working right now for the next gen generations and we are, we are taking benefit from the past 20 years so um, we are always looking further and looking uh, in front of us and at the end but um yeah, yeah. and every year is a challenge and uh, we need to rethink everything because every vintage is different um, every vintage um, is simple is not um, is, is in the cellar is not too much rain not too much the heavy uh, hot days not cool nights not easy to win. It's not easy. Wine, uh, and uh, you know, the, the, I have the 18 in mind and it was like seven months of rain, only rain. Yeah, at the end, we had like fantastic uh, summer. The September was epic. It was amazing. And we had the chance and the luck to, to have us perfect grapes. And I think it, 18 is one of the best in Perfect. And we're really uh, lucky here in Bordeaux to have the possibility to, to produce like 15, 16, 17 or so, 18, 19, 20 in a row. It's nice. So we'll see. So we need, you need to come back in 10 years to take this. <laughs> I think you're gonna, <laughs> you come earlier, I hope so. If you, if you ask kindly, yeah, I will think about it. <laughs> no, of course, of course. I will probably be here every, every six months. So. Okay. No, but it's nice and very interesting as well. Yeah, so every six, mo six months we're gonna test new vintages. Perfect. You see? Sounds like, sounds all, like a good plan full, to me. Full knowledge about Camp Nigran wines. I can come and work here maybe. <laughs> we, they are waiting for you. <laughs> I'm not going to be a farmer, but who knows? Probably in the so cellar. That's, that would be nice. So, Pauline, thank you so much for You're the welcome. tasting. With pleasure. So, the overall expression of this experience and vertical tasting um, the winery is very consistent about its quality the 06 mm. the first year of the, the own eh? but voilà. yeah, pre previous and, until now the quality is there even for the harder years the quality is there so it's consistently increasing to perfection 
Yes, second thing. this is the goal. Yeah, this because is you the have goal. a lot of wineries that go up and down, but this is very consistent and very important. So I'm going to take this <laughs> and I'm going to run. <laughs> it's your <laughs> chicken, so. <laughs>